Holy moly, holy cow, holy what is going on? I I can't believe it. I can't believe they did it. I can't believe they fired him. I, yo, I know this is going on in the middle of a Packers game. It's fourth quarter. Um, I had to go live because I, I just have, first of all, I have two kids. I have bedtime coming up. Second of all, for those of you who don't know, I'm not a Packers fan. I'm a Niners fan anyway, so the Packers game isn't a big deal to me. I know it is for a lot of y'all. I'm not minimizing that, but I have to go live. This is incredible. They they fired Paul Christ. Paul Christ has been fired as the Wisconsin Badgers head coach. I, I am, first of all, multiple things here. We're going to talk about this a ton going forward, okay? An absolute ton going forward. I'm stunned. Y'all, I'm stunned. And Nathan on Culture Barbarian, Dallas Cowboys, Duzzy, I see you in the comments. We have so much to talk about on this. I have to get something out because I am stunned. And you see paint on my hand. I was painting my barn today. So a couple things here. A couple things that to me are really incredible. The first is the Badgers aren't messing around. Is a rookie athletic director, Chris McIntosh. We all thought that he would be kind of um, gun shy. Yo, he is not messing around. The Badgers are eating the buyout. They're not waiting for the end of the season, which the funny thing is, y'all, listen, I have a show coming out tomorrow, which now isn't isn't even going to make a ton of sense, where I had said, now is the time to talk about this. Now is the time to start talking. We don't need to wait till the end of the year. We don't need to. We've seen enough data points of Paul Chris to know who he is. And I'm so, like, wired right now, y'all. I hope. I don't know. Let me let me start here. Actually, let me rewind all this. Let me start here. Paul Chris is a good dude. Okay. Paul Chris bleeds Wisconsin. He is from the state of Wisconsin, played in Madison. Like, and he there's been a lot of good moments from Paul Chris tenure. And I don't want to be the guy that's that's dancing on anybody's grave. Okay. This is not that in any way. I am wired up, not because I'm happy at his expense or anything like that. I'm I'm a excited for where the program can go now but I want to be very clear on what Paul Christ has done for Wisconsin and how much he cares about this program there's a lot of good here a lot of good a lot of good in that in Paul Chris has done he's won 70 percent of his games okay we all agreed myself Scott Justin people on the show a lot of y'all in the community we've all agreed The program is going in the wrong way. We would like to move it in a different direction. I want to be very clear that we should still be respectful at this moment, in this moment of what Paul Chris did. That being said, like, wow. Wow, wow, I have no agenda. I don't even know exactly what I'm doing here, but I, a couple things. So Jim Leonard is going to take over as the interim coach. Does that mean he's probably the coach at the end of the year going forward? Probably, all right? As long as the wheels don't fall off. Uh, It probably means he's that guy um at at the end you know coming into next season he, it's probably his job to lose and so many great comments already uh Nathan Ruffalo you know love this decision let's go Jim Leonard uncultured barbarian you know already talking urban meyer do we want him do we not i agree with the uncultured barbarian we don't want urban meyer or, i sh- i shouldn't speak for everybody i don't want urban meyer i'm not going to speak for everybody at all like maybe y'all do um does he 24 so insane just got with my dad two minutes before the news broke and we agreed it wouldn't happen does he yeah we all of us thought it wouldn't happen i literally just did a show that i expected him to be the head coach next year so i'm stunned i'm stunned that wisconsin made this move right now even though i think it's smart i think it's the right move what they did here is forward thinking what's what's wisconsin motto you know forward on wisconsin What they're doing here is getting ahead of the problem. And the other thing they're doing, and this is so smart, y'all. It's so smart. And Uncultured Barbarian is hitting on this. What they're doing is they're giving Jim Leonard a tryout. You remember Greg Gard, right? Um, Bo Ryan leaves in the middle of the season. And this really wasn't the Wisconsin decision. Bo Ryan kind of set this up for Greg Gard. But we got to see Greg Gard get a chance and evaluate him. We're able to see Jim Leonard now get a chance as the head coach, see how the program responds and have an honest evaluation of it. Like, this is the best of of both worlds. For those who want Jim Leonard, for those that want to move on from Paul Christ, and those who aren't sold on Jim Leonard, we get a sample size. We can see how he respond. Listen, we all have said this Paul Christ thing isn't working. And for Wisconsin to recognize that as well, 
I'm just stunned. I am stunned, 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 stunned. Um, I have said multiple times that the time to have this conversation about Paul Christ is right now. It is right now. And the fact that I, I was never – I was never a fan of the idea that we need to wait till the end of the year to have this conversation about, about Paul Chris. I thought we had enough data points. Like I said, we, we know who he is at this point. We've seen for several years now where this program is going. You don't, I don't need to see seven more games to, to figure out who Paul Chris is. Like, so I, I love the fact that Wisconsin, the athletic administration is right there with us. Um, let's see. Jared Maddie in there says, go get urban. Um, Dallas Calboss, I always liked Chris, but it was time. I hope he can stick around and maybe run recruiting, but maybe not after firing him. Yeah, listen, Dallas Calboss, I'm going to see. I don't know if I can – how do I get your chat, your your comment into the stream here if anyone can see it. But I think that's a really good comment. I always like Chris too, 100%. Let's keep it real. The The criticisms we've had with Paul Chris have never been – have never been about he's a bad dude, Right. Uh, let's be real. It's never been Paul Chris is a bad guy. We wouldn't want our players to to play for him. We won't want our kids to play for him, that he's not a loyal dude, that he doesn't care about Madison. That's never been the criticisms of Paul. The criticisms have been the offense hasn't worked, right? Some of the hires have been kind of odd. Recruiting has gone down the last couple of years. Dropping games, he shouldn't lose. But Paul Chris is a good dude, you know, and it, it is a sh- it's a shame it all, that this is how it ended, but it had to end. It had to end. And y'all, I am stunned. Um, and I see a bunch of comments in the chat saying the same thing. Uncultural Barbarian, I am stunned, but now I have hope. Uh, Frank Canoe, Wisconsin needs to change their style of play. They live in the 80s football. Yeah, I mean, listen, that's Paul Crisera, right? That's when he played. That's when he cut his teeth in football, uh, Frank. So it makes sense that that's the era that he harkens back to. Um, let's keep going. Zach Bartz, Paul just looked dead, and the team followed no energy, enthusiasm. Yeah, like it's uh, it's a hundred percent true. Paul was just dead. There was nothing there. Uh, it, it looked like that on the sideline. Every time the camera would pan to him, fair or not, right? It's not like every time the camera pans to me or someone else is there. It looks like I'm the most engaged. But he always, this last couple of years, it just looks like there's no fire there anymore. Um, and again, not a bad dude. This is not a show to dance on anybody's grave. I want to be super clear on that. I'm not here for that. I'm not. Paul's a Wisconsin dude. God love him. He's a Wisconsin dude. And he's a guy a lot of us like. And he's a guy who's personable uh, one-on-one. He's a guy who is loyal and has had a lot of success in Madison. But the time has come. And again, I'm going full circle. This is not a scripted show. Y'all know that. I am just stunned. Again, I have a show coming out tomorrow. I literally just recorded. Y'all have to disregard it. It's basically, I thought it was an aggressive take on Paul Christ where I was pushing back on some media members that were saying, no, we don't want to talk about this now. We can wait till the end of the year. And I was like, no, no, no. We need to have this talk about Paul Chris right now. The talk needs to happen right now. We don't need to wait till the end of the year. We don't need to fire him mid season. That's that wasn't what I was calling for, but the talk needs to happen now. Uh, let's see a bunch more comments. Um, Frank Canoe or Frank Carone. I'm sorry. I'm a Buckeye fan. Jim Trestle, Urban Meyer changed Ohio state the way that, yeah. I mean, you know, the Ohio State changed from Trestle, you know, when Urban Meyer and Ryan Day came on board. Uh, Volcano Thunder Puppet. That's a solid name, by the way. Uh, definitely time to make the move, but I'm sad to see him go. He was the coach when I was student at Wisconsin, and I wish him nothing but the best. Yeah, 100%. I'm right there with you, man. Ed Rogers, he's still cashing them checks. He'll be fine. He will be fine. Listen, at the end of the day, this isn't life or death at sports, and we all live or die with our teams, but Paul Christ will be fine. He's, he's made a lot of money and he's represented Wisconsin really well. So certainly we wish him the best, but it's, it's time to move. Um, Uncultured barbarian. You think Leonard is going to put the ball in Mertz's hands and let him cook. You know, the funny thing here, and let me know in the comments, you guys let me know. We have no idea what Jim Leonard thinks offensively, right? Like, do we, he's been a defensive dude his whole life. He's never really been outspoken on that side. I do think that, as a lifelong defensive guy, he probably understands how to attack defenses, right? And on, on culture barbarian, I see you're agreeing. Yeah, we really don't know what he thinks offensively, but I, I think he probably understands how to attack defenses, right? He probably understands what gives him trouble, you know, when he's game planning for certain defenses. You know, here's think of it this way. 
And again, I apologize to all y'all that I'm doing all the talking. This is a live YouTube channel. You should go live on StreamYard, which allows me to interact a little bit more with y'all. I got to figure out how to do it better on YouTube. But that being said, um, so please don't feel like I'm not trying to get your comments up here. Like this is a show for all of us. Again, everything we do is about building our Badger community. Um, what I was going to say is, do you think when Jim Leonard is game planning throughout the year, he sees Iowa on the schedule and he's like, ah, oh, they have a really dangerous offense. I hate playing them. No, no, I, I'm sure he doesn't. He probably sees Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, you know, even Indiana, maybe when they had some of those weapons. Those are the type of schools that give us trouble. Nebraska, you know, right when they had Martinez. I would I'm curious if that's the type of direction he would want to go offensively because that's what's given him trouble. You know, and again, so many more, so many more comments. Um, Mitchell Belak, who's been a, a longtime commenter of the show, says, I'd be curious to know who's going to be on the short list of candidates other than Jim. Yeah, I don't think we're going to know. And honestly, I think it's Jim, Jim Leonard's job to lose. I really do. But Wisconsin, let's be real here. Wisconsin is a premier program in one of the two most powerful conferences in college football. It's a program that's about to drop 300 million in practice facilities. It's a program that is the flagship program in a, in a big state that loves football, right? There's a lot of history here. This is a very attractive job. You're going to get elite coaching candidates for this job. If you so choose to seek them out, right? And maybe you decide internally to stick with Leonard, which I'm fine with that. I said that. I, I think Jimmy Leonard is really smart and the defensive track record has been impeccable. I trust his eye on talent and on hiring. And I think he's a little more uh, forward thinking and innovative than Paul Chris. So I'm, I'm super stoked to see how this plays out. And again, like Wisconsin handled this so well and they did it in a way that none of us thought because now we get to see Jim Leonard in a trial run. This could have worked out better because what if what if um, Jim Leonard has a trial run and we run the table? That I, I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, or we lose one or two games, but we're really competitive and we look a lot better. I think we go into next year with Jim Leonard and we feel really good about it. Conversely, what if Jim Leonard, we hand him the reins and the rest of the season gets worse or nothing changes? Then maybe we have some pause and we go after Dave Aranda, Lance Leopold, someone like that. This is working out as perfectly as it could have given the circumstances, right? Nobody wants to go into the season, be two and three and fire your head coach. But given where we're at, uh, hats off, man. Hats off to, to McIntosh for pulling the trigger, being decisive, not being reactive, being very proactive. Um, Zach Bartz basically said, yeah, I really didn't think Wisconsin could do this, let alone midseason. Thought our only hope was that he walked away at the end of the year. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's where I was too. The show, Zach, and thank you for the comment, man. That's – Literally, the show I just recorded said Paul Christ is probably going to be here next year unless he walks away. I was wrong. I'm wrong a lot, by the way. I was wrong on the defensive line this year. Um, I certainly was wrong on taking the over. Although I, I, I was right about it's time to talk about Paul Christ, and we don't need to wait till the end of the year. So I'll give myself some credit there. Um, let's see. A bunch more comments. Forrest, a, a Guire, uh, got to say, after looking at the game yesterday, the offensive line looked like the worst we've had since 96. Wonder if Leonard will can Bostead. You know, mm, Forrest, thank you for the comment. That's super interesting. Not, not so much the Bostead thing off the jump, but I am very interested to see where Leonard will go in, in, in terms of all the staff, right? There's some guys on the staff now, and again, this – I don't do this. Like, I, I really try not to call for anybody's job, right? Um, but there are some guys on the staff that have been more Chris guys. Chris Herring, for example. You wonder what's going to happen in a lot of ways as this program changes a little bit. You know, Bosted, would he be safe? Would Bobby Ingram be safe? We don't know. I, I would assume that the plan is, you know, April probably moves to defensive coordinator, Leonard to head coach. I'm sure the offensive, excuse me, I'm sure the offensive side stays intact for this year. But after next year? Again, it goes back to we don't really know what Jim Leonard thinks offensively. We don't know what his philosophy is. Um, Uncultured Barbarian, do they have anyone on the staff who can light a fire under the, the offensive line? He used some some choice language there, which I love. Uh, I think it's Bostead, right? That was always Bostead's thing. Bostead's thing was a guy who would light a fire. And I don't know why it hasn't translated this year. Now, I would say injuries, um, and it is Bostead's first. It's, it's his first kind of go around coming back to the offensive line. So maybe we were premature. Maybe I was premature expecting immediate changes there. 
Um, a lad, Chris is a class act, but Big Ten football is passing him by. Not glad about his departure, but it was necessary. That's it. Uh, that's a hundred percent said better than I could have said it. Uh, a lad, man, thank you for the comment. That's a hundred percent the truth right there, right? Um, Chris is a class act, one hundred percent. Big Ten has passed him by. Hard to argue. Uh, not glad about his departure, but it was necessary. Nailed it again. None of this. Chris is a good dude. Like I think all of us agree, but. At the end of the day, if you're making $5 million and we're all here for the football program, right? We're not here just for the good dudes. We, we won a winning program. It wasn't going in the right direction with Chris. And again, I'm going to cut this pretty soon because I, I want to do a longer show as well and really dive into it more. And I definitely want to get you all more involved, which I can't figure out how to do on YouTube live streams right now. That's a technical limitation of me. Um, so we're going to do another live show where I can get all you on. And you can join just like we do on the post-game therapy sessions. Uh, but I just had to get this out because this is stunning. I mean, I'm telling you all, nobody thought this was happening. Nobody. Nobody. The local media guys, a lot of them. And I'm not. this is not a knock on anybody because I wasn't that far from them. A lot of them said, we can't even talk about this this year. This, that's an after-the-year discussion, not a decision. That's an after-the-year discussion. And that's where I said, no, no, no. That's a discussion for right now. We don't need to be that reactive. We can be proactive and at least get the discussions going. But I never, never would have thought. And I'm more progressive on this, I think, in, at just at least on this topic than others. But I, even then, I never thought a midseason firing would be in the cards. Um, it's amazing. A Forrest Aguirre getting so glad that Mac, you know, has a pair. I don't think Barry would have fired Chris. Yeah, this is, yo, let's, let's be really real here. Chris McIntosh, rookie athletic director, has not been there that long. And I think this was probably a tough spot for him. Like, that's kind of a good old boy network thing. You know, McIntosh played here. Obviously, relationships with Barry, with Paul. He didn't hesitate. He he did not hesitate. And that's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, you know, Alan Karcher Barbarian comes back again, putting Jim in charge. They should look at revamping the recruiting department. I would maybe hold off there. I don't know. Um on Culture Barbarian, again, again, just the best the best name in any of our chats. I actually like Mickey Turner in that role. Although, if we're going to be honest, the results haven't been great this year. But how much of that is maybe Paul Christ isn't closing the deal as well? Like, Mickey Turner, I feel, feel like, could be a good recruiting director. Like, he has, he's played at Wisconsin. He was a coach here. I think he's always been a personal guy. He's a guy who has landed a lot of good tight ends as well. A lot of tough recruiting battles. So I think Mickey Turner can be good in that role, but could we add two or three bodies to that department? Again, Michigan State is like 12. I think we have like four or five. You know, could we at least make up that disparity a little bit? Um, we got some other fans in here. We got a USC fan, Ohio State fans. Uh, G Green's a USC fan. Just want to say that I'm happy for you guys. I'm a huge fan of your program tradition. You guys deserve to see your program flourish. Fight on. And he throws up the deuce sign. Let's, listen, a hey, super appreciate you in the chat, man. Um, excited to have USC come to the conference in a couple of years. I'm still a little salty about losing Tackett Curtis to y'all. I love that's a great win for you guys. Um, but no, thank you. Really appreciate it. Um, this is a good vibe show now. Uh, Mark D, how long does Ingram have now? I think it's probably that's a great question, Mark. I think this is probably a bit of a trial run, just like Jim Leonard, right? I think Bobby Ingram is also on a bit of a trial run right now to see where. If the offense goes, was he the big question with Ingram and y'all let me know in the comments what you think. But the big question with Ingram was, is he being shackled by Paul Christ, right? Is he running the offense to Paul Christ's expectations and that's limiting him or is Bobby Ingram? Did he become the offensive coordinator because he's also kind of a conservative run first guy like Paul Christ? And this is what he wants to do. And I got to be honest, we don't know. We, we don't know. So, um, you know, it could be a situation where this is the offense Bobby Ingram wants to run. And if that's the case, he's probably not going to be here past this year. But I think it's going to be much like Jim Leonard, a trial run. Uh, G Green, yeah. Uh, seeing the comments again about Tackett Curtis, kid's going to be a monster. Yeah, like that's a big win for y'all. He, We've been on Tackett Curtis for a couple of years talking about him. I had, had his coach on that show. Um, I'm still hoping to flip him, but <laughs> it's probably not going to happen now. Uh, let's see. Aaron Herrings chimes in. Uh, it's actually the wife. She sounds pretty excited. She gave it a thumbs up. So this is, again, I'm just stunned. I am beyond stunned that the, the athletic department made this move right now. 
you know, five games into the year, nobody, nobody would have come into the season expecting Paul Chris to be fired. It, we have people on the show. Most people on the show expected the Badgers to hit the over on the 10. This is one of the most stunning recent developments in Badgers athletic history. I mean, I, I can't think of another thing that came as this big of a surprise, you know, so let me know in the comments if you can think of one. We're definitely going to have a ton more on this. Appreciate. We have 210 people listening right now, 211. Appreciate all y'all listening. Um, we're going to get another show out in this where we're going to get several people together, talk about it, talk about some of the candidates. Uh, Matthew Ostrand didn't think McIntosh had the guts. I didn't either. And I wouldn't even say guts. It's just how many – here, let me, let me frame it like this. And you guys let me know. How many – um, athletic programs, how many college football programs are firing their coach that aren't a blue blood, by the way, because Wisconsin is not a blue blood. How many non blue blood programs are firing their coach that has won 70% of their games and runs a clean culture? I mean, how many are doing that? I it's, I'm just stunned. I am just stunned, stunned, stunned. Um, a bunch more coming up. I do think this Illinois game, the way it played out, I, I'm curious if, if that game would have been a little closer, right. Or, you know, not even that Wisconsin won, but if that game had been a little closer. I'm curious if Paul Chris would still be the coach, but maybe it was just the level of ineptitude um, for the second week in a row that sealed the deal. I don't know. Um, I'm just, this is amazing. Uh, it's just an absolute incredible, incredible um, Sunday for the Wisconsin Badgers program and a, a tectonic shift. This is a, an enormous shift in where Wisconsin was and the trajectory going forward. And the other thing we talked about this, this season was losing its juice, right? This season was, and now I don't, I don't, again, this is not dancing on Paul Chris grave. It's not like we needed him to be fired, to be excited about the rest of the year, but it does feel like there's an injection of enthusiasm, an injection of hope, an injection of, you know, this isn't good enough that Wisconsin fans had mostly thought wouldn't happen. So hats off to Chris McIntosh, a bunch more coming up. Paul Chris has been fired as the Wisconsin Badgers head coach after a relatively successful tenure at Wisconsin. And I think that's important to note. And we're probably going to end on that again, as you can expect a ton more coming up um, on lockdown Badgers. We're going to get more people on the show, talk about them. Really, really appreciate everybody tuning in for the live show. We got 264 listening. If you can, uh, if you want to support the show, please subscribe. Uh, if you want to join the discord, we have a, a Badgers chat on the discord. It's free. You can qualify for free giveaways, and it's 100% about building the community, building all of us up together. I'm stunned. Like, again, a um, bunch more comments. F Echo, Eat, Drink, Listen, Muppy B. Again, I'm stunned. Absolutely stunned. Um, we're going to wrap it there, but look for another show on this literally tonight, tomorrow, where we'll get a little more in depth, talk about it a little bit more, probably do a little bit of a, a relook at Paul Chris and his era at Wisconsin and, and really try to wrap it up a little better than I was able to do today. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Happy Sunday. A uh, bunch more coming up on Wisconsin.